director of the Indiana University of Bloomington, mm -hmm. and she's a resident here at SCNM. And why it's important to talk about um, lesbian gay health, um, I just read some facts basically that the youth gays basically there is an increase in bullying, there's increase in um, suicide. Also, um, for elderly, there are no social programs to um, help them, and there's a lot of mental and health issues. And I also read on the LGBTI website that there was um, not really a health insurance, like um, legally, there wasn't any program in process. So basically, talking about these ideas um, can get the ball rolling on programs getting started, whether it's health or social related. So, that's it, right? All right, so today is going to be pretty quick. I have a number L shift at 12.30, which we have to discuss in cases, so I'm going to have to dip out pretty quick, but I'll do a brief overview of the health considerations in the lesbian and bisexual community. So I just want to talk about, as she mentioned, there's specific health concerns that are particular to this community. There's also an increased uh, risk of drug abuse, smoking, mental health concerns, and the lack of family support can interfere with the um, ability to seek treatment and receive treatment. And also, we have to consider what we can do as physicians to better facilitate this community and also how we can educate other physicians on these issues to, as she described, there's a lot of, um, there's a big gap in the treatment and the focus in this community. So there's not a lot of resources. So some of the limitations to treatment. There, I don't know if any of you have experienced any criticism or prejudice against yourself when discussing sexual history with a physician. I know I, in particular, have Actually, it was my first year here at school where I um, was from a routine PAP yearly exam and the physician, not here, but the physician said, oh, you're not a breeder <laughs> to me in front of other people. And it was, it was really devastating for me because of, just because I'm gay doesn't mean that I don't want children. So there's things like that. And um, for me, I was able to not take it too personally. And I mean, I was offended, but some people that would prevent them from wanting to get routine exams in the future because they, you know, have been criticized for something and they don't feel comfortable or safe sharing their sexual experiences and their concerns with the doctor. So that's something that we can do as practitioners to encourage that we are a safe place for, for patients to come and that we won't be judgmental. So as naturopaths, we should be that way anyways, but specifically, if you have friends, family, or you're a member of the community, you have um, more compassion. Also, the fact that, as she mentioned, that a lot of times, you know, as gay couples, you don't have you have don't have the domestic partnership coverage that the heterosexual counterparts have. So the lack of insurance can interfere with this as well. And then the just not knowing the specific health concerns that affect the lesbian and bisexual community could prevent a doctor from effectively evaluating and treating the patient. So there's actually some specific cancer risks that are higher in the lesbian and bisexual community. So um, breast cancer, and this is linked to, or associated with the fact that there's a higher rate of obesity, um, alcohol use, and smoking in this community. Also, if, they, if women do um, become pregnant, it oftentimes is later in their life, so they're more at risk for developing cancer. And then as I described before, for both cervical, uterine, and breast cancer, the lack of um, annual screening because of the fear of prejudice could also interfere with them getting treatment and getting um, it diagnosed in a timely manner. So with the cervical and uterine cancers, you'll learn this in your Clifford classes that null parity, so not ever having been pregnant, is an increased risk of uterine and cervical cancers. So this is, as I described, the progesterone is protect protective. So even for straight women or bisexual women who use birth control pills, that even though birth control pills have this negative stigma, if they have progesterone in them, the progesterone is really uh, protective of this issue. So either having been pregnant or having been on birth control pills actually can decrease your risk of these cancers. And 
as far as the STIs go, it's it's pretty comparable. I mean, obviously, you would want to screen for STIs between each partner, just like you would recommend to any person. Um, but there's one in particular that is more common in the lesbian bisexual community, which is bacterial vaginosis. So it's unknown as far as why this is, but um, it tends to be both couples are affected. And then as you learn in the cohort process, it's the one that has the fishy odor or positive lift test. So just a, something that you would want to be more um, concerned about in this community. So then the biggest thing I wanted to talk about is, and I want your feedback too, what about being a member of this community makes you more at risk for, for the mental health concerns? The, as she mentioned, the increased risk of suicide. And um, you know, there's oftentimes a, a heavy link with, uh, or a higher percentage that have been physically or emotionally abused in the past as well. So I just wanted to kind of open this up to, to talk about the inc why, why is there a higher rate of alcohol and drug use and the mental health concerns. So does discrimination. Anybody I mean, discrimination. Mm -hmm. um, also maybe just repressing how you really feel and not really having someone that you feel like you're comfortable talking to about it. Mm -hmm. so. Can everybody hear her? Oh, sorry. So she, she was saying that discrimination and also um, not feeling you have someone comfortable that you can bring up the issues about so can cause you to have some mental um, mental health issues that are not addressed. Okay. Yeah. I think there's a there tends to be a lack of um, it's really hard if you're an outsider coming into a lesbian community. There's certainly they tend to be kind of clicky, mm -hmm. and so there's. to be the common place of any gay gathering is it's centered around drugs, alcohol, smoking, that sort of thing, which is really unfortunate. Um, and something I didn't include in this that I just wanted to, to let you know, there on Meetup, meetup.com is awesome. There's all sorts of groups that have all sorts of great focuses. There's a group called, um, I think it's either LGBT or GLBT um, Women Warriors. And it's a, it's a group of women who want to um, investigate the spiritual side of life. And they, um, they meet and do meditations. They talk about all sorts of cool stuff about um, what specific health concerns and m more of the mental side of things and um, reaching that spiritual connection and how that can be you know, a, oftentimes a missing link. Because with churches and things like that, sometimes you can feel like you're not welcome in these communities that are, you know, bring that spirituality into your life. So this is just a group that I've found that is really great because we talk about spirituality and we're you're with people who are, you know, in the community. And so I just wanted to give them a plug. Is there something else that you wanted to say? Oh, I was going to say, I mean, it's kind of piggybacking off what you said, but also, um, you know, you talk to people about it or if you, you say, okay, I'm a lesbian, they're like, well, you know, it's a decision that you made, you know, or um, you can, you know, if you spiritually, maybe if you pray about it, you know, you can be ungay or mm -hmm. something like that. So you can um, have some internal things with that and it can cause mental, um, mental health issues. Anybody else want to speak on this? Excellent. 
So there's a, a couple of networks that I found that are for gay and lesbian medical association. So they provide online healthcare referrals. So as future docs, and for me as a baby doc, trying to get your name out there, finding a niche for yourself, um, a community that you want to work on, and maybe it's not specifically the, the LGBTI community, but um, we, they need help. They need people who understand their concerns and care about them. And um, so I think joining this network will be a great way to get your name out there, let people who are in this community and interested in natural medicine, they see you, they want to come to you, they know that you're safe, you're supportive. So that's something that's a great resource for patients and also something to consider for yourselves as well. I know I'm planning on, on looking into joining that. There's also, if you have patients who have cancer, there's a specific the cancer network that's specific to this group, which is awesome. So they have a lot of online resources, support groups, all these things that can make this process easier for your patients. And this is also something I want to just have a conversation about. So what can we do as physicians to better support um, this community? Obviously, I think you know joining this network, um, being transparent, um, something that I think is really helpful once you been in this community or you have friends or family you're an ally um, thinking of you know when a parent comes to you and their child is coming out and they're really upset and they're wanting to how do I what do I do you can provide that safe place and that dialogue to really help them think through it to help your patients as they're exploring their sexuality to um, a lot of physicians don't have that that insight that we have so I think that that's something that can be really helpful for a lot of patients and parents of patients who, um, you know, just don't have a lot of um, information about how to navigate and figure out sexuality and, and answer these questions for. And then just to be a safe place for, for patients, you know, a lot of, we talk about obstacle to cure in naturopathic medicine. If the obstacle to cure is trauma from childhood or it's a lack of family support, and you know, a lot of times with these patients, they'll have, they'll present with pelvic issues, interstitial cystitis or chronic pelvic pain. So it's, you know, right around the second chakra, which is your sense of support and foundation, which if your family is as supportive of you or your friends and family are judging you, then you can manifest in physical disease. So what we do as naturopaths is try to get to that root cause. And instead of treating those symptoms, really digging in and treating that trauma from childhood or treating you know, discussing what it is to have support and helping them find support if it's not within their family, outside of the family. And that can actually treat them, you know, actually get to the root cause of their illness as opposed to a doctor who's just looking at it as a physical, organic disease. So I think that's something as naturopaths that we really have in all realms of medicine, that we have a really important gift into really trying to figure out why is this happening in the first place. And a lot of times it will be providing that safe place for the patient to open up because they may, be, may have never talked about this with any other doctor because they might not realize that it's very much related. So it's just something I wanted to mention there. And then like I'm doing now, I know this is a small group, but just starting the dialogue, talking you know, at conferences or seminars, whatever you can, to educate other doctors about the concerns, how we can better serve this population. And I think that, you know, as you were mentioning, that the increased risk of, of suicide and bullying in the teens, it's so much worse than when we were in school, when we were munching inside them. And it's, it's getting worse and worse every year. It seems like there's more, there's more cases on the news and this bullying. I think the internet allows people to be very mean without, you know, being face to face and that it's, it um, obviously has a huge impact on their sense of well-being and their self-esteem. So um, it's really important to just talk about it. And as I say, you know, get out in your local community. Let people know that you're there and that you support them. You know, go to if it's meetup groups and asking, you know, asking if you can come and speak and talk about what naturopathic medicine is and how we can help this community in particular. Does anybody else have any other thoughts on what we can do as physicians to better serve? Sorry. Go ahead. Well, um, just basically like how to appropriately um, acquire about someone's orientation, you know, just how they identify themselves. I mean, 
I can be a woman that loves women, but I mean, I consider myself a lesbian. We were talking about this yesterday, but how do you, how do you um, do that? Or, I mean, that could be a way of establishing rapport with the person. You don't just assume, but how do you do that? Right. So you know, are are you asking me? I was asking you, um, but that would, and I was also saying that that could be a way of. Mm -hmm. um, of addressing or making it easier to communicate. Right. So, you know, like a lot of times when you go in for your reg your well women's exam every year, they it's assumed that you are having intercourse with the opposite sex. So talking about birth control and all these things and it can be really awkward, I agree, to say, well, you know, I don't use condoms because I'm not with guys or, you know, whatever that is. So just saying from the get go, let's talk about um, can you please, you know, talk with me about your sexual history, men, women, or both? And just put that out there from the get-go. And then that way, they're, they're like, oh, okay. So it is acceptable to, you know, sleep with both or to, you know, whatever it is. So that you're kind of putting that out there as far as this is all fine. You know, and I think that's something that most docs don't. They just go right into, you know, do you use condoms? Me too, but you know, so just putting that out there from the get go really allows that safe space. But yeah, that's a really good point. Sorry, David. Um, I was just gonna ask your personal opinion on something. Like, I've heard varying opinions on this, but how do you feel about being out as a doctor to your patients? I, I actually went to the American Psychiatric Association conference in San Francisco this past summer, and there were actually two different seminars on that topic. Which is awesome. Uh, the MDs are talking about, and it was. I went. To, of course, I went to all the GLBT um, talks out of you know all of them. But um, and it was there was mixed. There were some that were saying there's a, a F to M um, transgendered man who um, you know works in a very busy hospital in the emergency room area, and he had to obviously tell all of his staff, the nurses patients I'm you know transitioning to become a man I'm you know going through the, the hormones and and he wrote a formal letter to everyone and just opened that invitation of if you have questions if you have concerns please talk with me I want to talk with you and explain this and he got really good response and he's still it's like he's at one of like Harvard or Stanford, one of the really big name hospitals and he's they kept him on staff he didn't get any discrimination, but it's because he was transparent. Obviously, with something like that, it's pretty obvious when, <laughs> when that's happening. But um, I think it's really a case-by-case -case basis because there are some people who might not come to you because of your identity, which it could, you know, or they may be seeing you and find out that you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and that makes them feel, you know, uncomfortable and not want to open up as much. So in some instances, it could get in the way. But as Dr. Messer says, you be transparent. That's the best thing we can do for our patients. If we want them to honor themselves and to, to really be who they are, because that's another obstacle to cure. If you can't accept who you are and, and really know that, then that's inevitably going to impact your health. You're not speaking your truth. You're not owning who you are, and that's what we're here to do. is just to be us. So, like for me, I, you know, came out to my sisters when I was 16, but it took me till I was 26 to come out to my mom. But I did it because I knew before I see my patients, I have to be congruent. I have to be honest with myself. And I was honest with her, and I was terrified for 10 years and wanted to tell her. And she took it so well. And I had been stressing all this time. It's so funny. But, you know, we, it takes time, and you have to be in a place that you're ready. So, I mean, it's the same with thing with, yeah, being out to coworkers and family. And it's really a case-by-case -case basis, and you have to figure that out for yourself. But for me, I think it's important. So. I think it probably depends, too, on the kind of work you want to do, like somebody who maybe does men's health or women's health, it might be a little, like say I did men's health, it might be, I could understand it being uncomfortable, you know, it doesn't right. make it right or make sense, but I could understand like some straight men being uncomfortable coming to me for men's health, 
you being you know male. Right. But like what I actually intend on doing is mental health and a lot of like therapy and counseling and things like that. And that doesn't really have an effect on it shouldn't as much have an effect on somebody in my mind leaving out mm-hmm. because we're just talking, you know right. Both of those things. So I can imagine it would be different depending on what you kind of specialize in. Mm-hmm. I agree. You know, Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And so here's my contact info, and I just want to let you know, um, I have a private rotation Thursdays 5 to 9. Most, both, I only have two private patients right now, but both are students. And I just want to let you know that once you, you know, get in the clinic and you're wanting to get your health under control, it can be uncomfortable, especially if there's concerns such as these that you may not be comfortable talking with your peers about. So I'm happy I'm here for you if you want to investigate homeopathy, if you want to do acupuncture, if you want to just talk about these issues, I'm, I just wanted to let you know that I am happy and here for you guys because I know that there are a lot of issues. I mean, I'm, homeopathy is my favorite. I love it because talking about getting to the root cause, dealing with you know, guilt or shame or trauma from childhood, homeopathy is amazing. So I just want to put a little plug in for that. And just open it up for any questions that you guys have. Or anything else that you want to talk about. Um, yeah. I was actually talking to a friend of mine last night. <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I was talking to her um, about this meeting that we were going to have today. And we're having right now. And um, she said, I was talking to her about it. And she said, well, I don't go and get like checked out myself because she refers to herself as a stone bush. And she was like, I. I refuse to be penetrated. Like, I'm not gonna go and like get checked out because. And I told her I was like, well, I mean, you can refuse that, and there are other things that they can do, and you can still like be healthy, you know. Mm-hmm. And I just think that's an interesting. Um, that's something I never even thought of. Right. You know? I mean, I know of women who don't like to be penetrated, but I think that's like that's a really <laughs> yeah. specific and intimate you know thing that is like, a huge concern for a lot of. That is, I mean, it's uncomfortable for any woman to put your feet in the stirrups <laughs> and be so vulnerable. But yeah, I mean, I, that is very true. I mean, there, you know, some women that are the the gold star lesbians that have never been with a guy, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's it's a very good thought. Anything else? Yeah. You're working at the clinic. Are you satisfied with the paperwork and all that that goes there? Oh, um. I mean, it's, it's pretty good, but it could be better, definitely. I think, and I think our education could be a lot better. Like, we don't talk about sexuality hardly at all, which is a huge, a huge part of our lives as human beings. And I think that, you know, we need to be talking more about sex and what's normal and what's, you know, like in homeopathy, you ask, you have these questions at the end of the intake that are about their sexual activity and frequency, but we don't, really learn what's normal. So how do you know what's abnormal on that chart? So I think the more we can talk about this, and I'm happy to do more talks. I know I have to make this quick because I have to get over to clinic. But um, if you guys have, and I'll put it back to my email, um, which I'm also CC'd in all of David's emails to you guys too. But if you have any other um, topics you want me to talk on, or other sorts of things that you want to do, I'm happy to do more lunch talks. because. I think we need to be building this conversation a lot more. And maybe we can look at revising some of the, the intake forms and stuff and making some recommendations. I think it's a really good idea. Anything else? All right. Awesome. Sorry it was so brief, but I just wanted to at least do a quick, you know, kind of overview of what, what types of things we can be thinking about. And like I said, just shoot me an email if there's other things you want me to talk about or um, different groups, um, you know, 
show that we could bring in here to maybe let them talk and kind of just keep exploring this and keeping the dialogue open. Also, feel free to, um, like, most of us in here are board members, but um, like, hit us up if you see something that you want us to like, focus on. You know what I mean? Like, if you see something that's going on in the clinic or something that you know could use to be changed, like, okay. bring that to our attention. Because as a doctor, you probably see things from a different perspective than we do as students. Yeah. So um, if you see something that, like, hey, you guys should work on getting this changed or advocating for this or something, like, let us know. Yeah, I think it'd be really fun to have, um, maybe the next time if we can do another lunch talk to look at the intake forms together and kind of brainstorm how we can make it more universal and accepting, then we can bring those up to the, the clinic. I think that'd be something, a good first step for sure. Yeah, yeah the GLMA too has um, some, like, it gives you examples on like how to ask questions on your intake forms. Oh, too. great. Fantastic. So I've looked so, yeah. a little bit at it, but we should definitely bring that to you. Okay. Yeah, so let me know when you want me to, to come back and we can just do that together. Awesome. Well, thank you guys all for coming. And I don't know if you want to. Are you guys going to keep talking or having conversation? You guys, you know, brainstorm. Yeah, we can stay here. Yeah, whatever else you can. Yeah, just let me know, like I said. You want me to speak on anything? I'm happy to do it. I definitely started thinking about things I hadn't before, especially when you mentioned about the because um, I want to do men's health, of course, because uh -huh. you know I think a lot of guys want to do, do men's health, but you can stop it. If you want. Okay. But how does that work for you know?